Service Session looks good. Following up. Water towers can fly! Ego down to nominal. Water down to SCE off. Bring it, SCE off. Yikes. You bet. Okay. We don't need any more of these. Yikes, you bet concur. It is time for another NASA Space Flight Live. And you see our faces, because it's NASA Space Flight Live. Welcome back to this week's episode. It's going to be a wild one, of course, because it's myself and these two other jokers that I am with, of course, on... Oh, I pointed right. Yes, I, I still got it. Uh, on my r left, right, whatever, it's Adrian, Adrian Bottle. What's up, Adrian? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. And also, this will be fun. We have a majority in Europeans here. And also, I already feel sorry for Michael uh, in the background because <laughs> let's deal with this. <laughs> also, sorry for the chat mods. So, yeah, just strap in, everybody. It's going to be a week. Uh, and of course, also, uh, to, to this way, it is Alejandro. What's up, Alejandro? Well, I'm ready for, for today's show. I, I, I just don't know what to Are say. You? <laughs> Are you? Are <laughs> uh, you? Yeah, so your tone, your tone leads me to believe that you might not be, but I know you are. I know, <laughs> I know we're we're ready to go, so let's do this. Yeah. <laughs> All right, and don't forget, everybody, if you have any questions about the topic that we're talking about, you can just at NASA Spaceflight in chat, and that question will pop up in some nifty software. Michael wrote, "Oh, that reminds me, Michael is the live stream director for today's live stream. Thank you for flying, Michael Baylor Air." Uh, so yeah, Michael's <laughs> in the background doing all the important things, deciding what you see and everything. So if you don't like what you see, at Michael on Twitter and be mad at him like he is mad at other companies that show things that aren't rockets during launches. Um, I'm just kidding. Be nice to Michael on Twitter. Okay. So, again, if you have questions at NASA Spaceflight, I've got the panel up here in front of me. And with that, how about we jump right into it? with some discussion of this week's launches and various other space type events. Adrian, do you want to tell us about Rocket Lab? Yes, we had the kickoff of the Artemis missions, kind of, with the uh, kind of always slippery and always delaying capstone mission that finally launched, uh, bringing the, and I need to look this up, uh, this name because I cannot remember it fully, the Cislunar Autonomous Positioning System Technology Operations and Navigation Experiment to the rectilinear, near rectilinear halo orbit, which is, of course, the orbit that will also be used in the Artemis mission. So this is kind of a pathway mission, a mission to find out more about this orbit, about the specifics of this orbit. So far, this mission is looking great. There is all but one burn completed by the photon upper stage. So one more burn is left in the mission. After that, the photon will uh, separate from the, I think it's only 25 kilograms uh, heavy satellite that then will go to this near rectilinear halo orbit. I love that name, by the way. Um, and yeah, so far it's a, it's a great looking launch. And uh, I think the most awesome thing about it is that I th this is the smallest rocket ever to launch a payload to the moon if I'm correctly informed, nice. which is just cool. Yeah, it still kind of blows my mind that uh, Electron can throw a payload all the way to the moon. Yeah, um, mighty lunar photon doing all the, the work there. Yeah, true. The, that photon bus, they've gotten, oh my gosh, it's it's been huge. It's like a bigger platform, or perhaps equally as big pl platform as uh, Electron itself, like Photon. Without that, you know, their capabilities would be significantly less. It's uh, what we also should mention is this this uh, mission did not include reusability. Uh, so there was no catch attempt in this mission or anything like that, just for completion. And also it feels like how they are going with Electron right now, how are you going with KSP, like like building these very small kick stages that are super capable and then yeah. just launching them on very small rockets and going deeper and deeper with them. It's it's so cool to see such a small rocket deliver such a significant and important mission to to such a program and to, to the moon. It's kind of yeah, the kickoff to the moon. And it's not even like a boring moon orbit that's just like a standard equatorial something or even polar. It's the NRHO orbit, which, of course, like you said, will be used during the Artemis program. That's where the gateway will be. And so... Uh, I, I think uh, it, 
basically you can see Earth the entire time that you orbit, so there's no like comms blackouts or anything, and it's just it's just nifty. It's nifty that Electron can do that, and so way to go to Rocket Lab for well one burn left, but uh, for getting that that payload out there. Um, they had to cool. take so much performance of the rocket yeah. that they took the cameras off. So actually, there were there were two reasons why the cameras were off. One of them was performance, but also they they talk about this on the live stream, saying that you know the all the other telemetry from the rocket was so important to be able to to know how well it was going that they just stripped down the cameras. It was like we won't need this feed because we're going to be looking at all the other telemetry, which is way more important, and we we won't need it. So they were like prioritizing the the signals coming from the rocket. Uh, so it was like they they didn't even have cameras. <laughs> they they show us really good um, animations. I gotta say that. Nice. Yeah. I mean, I always think of like the the ULA animations are kind of like I don't even know how to describe it. I feel like I'm playing. Uh like a Star Wars game from the early 2000s or late 90s. Like, <laughs> like, like you know, I'm, playing, I'm playing X-Wing or TIE Fighter or something, and it's like, yeah. it, it's polygony, <laughs> but it looks good, but it's kind of polygony. But the, yeah, these look great. I Sorry, really, Adrian, what I, were you going to say? No, I just, uh, to the animations, I saw some people complaining about that because they didn't, probably or they didn't listen at the beginning of the webcast where they explained that they had no views on a second stage. But... Wow, these animations are cool. I wish that every every <laughs> launch that has no cameras on the second stage would just show such animations because yeah, that that was amazing. And also it's kinda amazing for a program like Artemis and general for for uh, such big programs that they can now utilize these small rockets for these kind of Pathfinder missions. So you don't have to use a Falcon 9, you don't have to use an Atlas to do these uh these kind of missions that usually are way more expensive and way bigger so it's it's kind of cool to utilize these these small launcher market for things like that and it perfectly fill that gap that probably would be a bit overkill for bigger rockets like falcon 9 yeah i mean you don't want to launch a starship or a falcon 9 or something like that and just have the payload be a little whole bunch of little tiny cubesats oh wait there's transporter uh <laughs> um, yeah, we have some. Be, well, we would do that. <laughs> we have some uh, viewer questions, of course, about Rocket Lab because don't forget, y'all can do that, and that's what we do here. First, just right off the bat, um, Nima. Wait, let's see. Oh, did I lose? No, here we go. Right off the bat, Jack Daniel is saying, uh, "Adrian, your mic stand makes it look like you're rocking an electric guitar," which I'm inclined to agree with. All right, no, seriously, Rocket <laughs> Lab time. Uh, also, while we're at it, Alejandro, you look like you're sinking into the into the floor, like. We we've all got we've all got our own look. I'm in I'm amidst some <laughs> clutter. It's it's a it's good. I can I can go up too much from here. So no, no you're Sorry. fine. I'm just joking around. Um, let's see. So, uh, Cristiano, I'm not I'm not sure if if any of us knows the answer to this, but y'all are, bro are both very much smarter than me. So, uh, Cristiano is asking, how do they combine uh, TEO burns? TEO is that trans but Earth something? Or is that a typo? Yeah, it, it, pro it probably is the burns or something. Uh, T H A E. Okay. I, I actually haven't. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure what acronym that would be. All right, well, bad question, Jack. You did. You picked a bad question. That's okay. The question was good, but I I picked wrong. Uh, <laughs> let's see. Yeah. Nemo Nemo Nermo is saying, "How cool was the white worm logo?" I think we're all on record as uh, agreeing that worm is better than meatball. So white worm yes. also good. Yeah. Oh. Is this a majority for the warm logo on NSF Live? Because nobody can stop us right now. This is kind of cool. I think so. so yeah. NASA well, I don't cool. care about the logo. I think all suck. But what? <laughs> yeah. What? I don't what? like any logo about NASA. It's, it's just boring. Oh my gosh! All right. Well, before Oops, before sparkles I... or something. I don't know. Oh, oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! <laughs> I got Adrian and I both got really excited, like "Yay, worm!" and uh, oh, you've just ruined it. You've it looks ruined. cool. I will. I won't deny okay. that, but okay. it's boring. I, I, I just admit that. Now everyone, boo! <laughs> I feel. Uh, I feel. I feel very betrayed. Just yeah, for the record, shots fired. <laughs> uh, also, is fired. Stian is asking, "Are we excited for Neutron?" Of course, I think we're all excited for more. It's reusable rockets to exist right yeah yes i think someone asked uh before 
we, the, 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 the burn one, why it is it so many burns and not one single burn? I think that was yeah, the question, somebody, right? Somebody did ask uh, why were there six burn or six relights of the engine? Yeah, so initially it was actually seven, but they have found out that the engine was performing so well that they could just combine one of the one of the oh. final uh, one of the final burns, and so they went from seven to six, and the sixth one is going to be this Monday. Um, one of the reasons why it is staged is because that's actually more efficient. The, the 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 engine is very very small, right? And so if you will if you if you do a uh, one single burn, it will take way too long. It will take probably half an hour or something, right? So instead of doing that half an hour burn, which is very inefficient, uh, what you do is shorter burns just to spread out over more time. And another reason for that is that this engine, unlike the normal Photon, this is the deep space version of the Photon, and that one uses the Hypercurie engine, and the Hypercurie engine uses electric pumps instead of being pressure-fed. What that means is that they use an electric uh, pump, basically, to, to pump all the, the propylene into the engine instead of relying only on the pressure of the tanks. And so what that means is that between burns, they need to recharge these batteries. And so what that means is that if you make the short the, the burns shorter, you can make the battery shorter and then recharge the battery with the solar panels. And so you have less dry mass on the on the spacecraft. And by that by that reasoning, you just basically make more delta V out of the same kind of size of, of the spacecraft. So it's a very more efficient burn all around in that That's... sense. Yeah, that's that's really nifty. So that answers the other question we had about how they were able to combine the the burns. Uh, pretty nifty. I mean, it reminds me of playing of playing Kerbal a lot, right? Like, yes. if you have enough delta v, you can just brute force the right orbit from like low Kerbin orbit. But yep. really, it's it's much more efficient to you know throw yourself out into a sun orbit and then you know at the right like two years later at the right point like tweak. Oh, uh, ask me how my rescue of my They're crew actually... on Eve is going. It's bad. And they're actually not taking a direct route to the moon. It's like they're pointing an orbit, which I think the, the apogee was something like 1.8 million kilometers, which you will think, well, that's very high up. You know, it's past the, the orbit of the moon. But when it comes back, that's when it, it catches the moon. And that actually makes the, the encounter speeds and everything like all these shenanigans about orbital mechanics. At the end of the of the day, what it means is that the approach and the delta v that you need to go into that near rectilinear halo orbit is less. So at the end of the day, the total delta v is much less than if you were to go encounter the moon directly, you know, in in a three day trajectory, and and you know, not don't have to wait for the moon or anything. This is why Capstone is taking at least I think it it was like four months to get to the moon because it's going to be going all the way out. And it's gonna come back, gonna go away again all the way out, and then it's gonna encounter the moon, and that's when it's gonna do the whole near rectilinear halo orbit. So it's gonna be a really long mission, but at the end of the day, it's it's gonna be much more efficient. But you know, there's no humans on board, so you can wait those four months. Sure enough, that's cool. You know, it just goes to show what clever mission design can do for oh yeah, in enabling you know specific missions on specific launchers, etc. Cool. Well, um, I think that does it for Rocket Lab right off the bat. Um, let's move into looks at document. I'm seeing people still. <laughs> what? Be what like, you... Worm. Oh yeah, I should I should mention um, meatball. Crispy in NASA Space Flight Actual in chat has uh, started a poll: Worm versus Meatball, and Worm is at seventy percent. So I think it's safe to say that NASA Space Flight fans are Team Worm. Uh, or it also proves them. once again how amazing our fans are because they choose the right uh, option. Yeah. yeah, and as we talk, it is currently skewing uh, 73% to 27% now. Worm over meatball, worm wins. <laughs> uh, I don't know how long this we're going to run win. that, but if you're, if you're in chat and uh, you want to weigh in on worm <laughs> versus meatball, that's, the, the poll is up. Uh, Only 500... if you team worm, though, if you team meatball, um, just, yeah. just watch the show. Yeah, if you're, if you're Team Meatball, the, the poll's already done. Sorry, you lose. Um, okay, Alex, let's talk about CES 22. Is it SES 22? Am I allowed to say CES 22? Yeah, SES 22. See, now people right. were, were already tired of listening to me. Now it's going to be again. But okay. Well, 
you're gonna bear with me for this. So nobody's, we saw nobody's tired a of Falcon we love Man your... launch. Go ahead. <laughs> Yeah, well, go I, I'm going to go over. We saw a Falcon 9 launch of the SES-22 satellite. This was uh, a geostationary satellite, which was um, to replace the C-band communication satellites um, that, you know, the FAA was like, uh, not the FAA, the FCC was like, hey, you're going to retire this, these satellites, and they're going to be introducing these new ones for TV satellites. Um, it's a it's a TV service that they provide to the north to North America, the U.S. You know now Fourth of July and everything, um, and yeah, we saw a beautiful launch. By the way, nothing to be um, nothing like the the next day with the Atlas. Why we're gonna go over that one later? Um, <laughs> it, it was the second flight of this booster, and it was also lo landing on a shortfall of gravitas, which by the way returned today. I think. So we have a few pictures from Julia and, and friends um, of of that one as well. Yeah, um, speaking of speaking of photos from Julia, she got a really awesome remote uh, engine shot as well. That's what oh, I was yeah. going to say. Yeah, that's true. We have a really good one. Um, Michael can show that one. It's, it's, it's oh, he amazing. will when he wants to and he's ready to. Oh, of course. There we go. There you go. <laughs> He might be late oh, just, just to mess with us now. Like, I, I will do it if I want to. Michael, mess with us? Yeah. What? <laughs> but yeah, that's an, that's an excellent, excellent shot. Uh, good stuff from yeah. Julia there and Steven as well. Uh, sorry, continue. I interrupted because I was excited about photos. You, I mean, you can interrupt me about things that you are excited about. This is the whole point of, 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 the, of the show. And one of the things that... that it was interesting to me is that before this mission, since we haven't had any NSF lives in a, in a while, uh, before this mission, there was supposed to be an, a Starlink launch, but they delayed that afterwards. And then we have CRS-25. So it's a little bit of juggling there of SpaceX missions that we have had in the past few weeks. And yeah, a little bit of delays here and there. But this mission marked the 27th launch of the first half of the year. And if they keep this pace, you know, they could reach 54 the whole year, which will be wow. a huge record. That's 27 and, yeah. just for SpaceX, right? Yeah, that's a SpaceX alone. Just 27 SpaceX. launches in the first half of the year, which is amazing. And it's also the same. Um, it, it also surpasses the record as the second most launches of a year. So the previous one was, the, so the second one previous Whatever. <laughs> the previous you, you record the for point. SpaceX yeah. launches per year. <laughs> yes. Exactly. So the first one is 2021 with 31 launches. The second one was 2020 with 25 orbital launches, 26 overall. We had in flight abort test in January 2020. And this year is already at 27. So we're already second. Let's see if we, if we get to, to first. Qu quick, quick quiz, quiz question for you both. Which is the rocket in this year with the second most flights? Oh boy! Oh, man. <laughs> and how I'm many? Gonna, how many? Is tap out. From many... from the U.S. No, or from it's not overall? from the U.S. Okay, because what I know the, the one from from the U.S., but I don't know. What's the answer? You know the us? second it's, one. Yeah, it's, it's uh, Long March for C with six launches. Yeah, I, you, you know the the Long Marches. Yeah. Yes. You you I, asked I, the question and you had a smile on your face, which meant that you knew the answer <laughs> and. Exactly. More importantly, you knew that we didn't know the answer. Yes. So. We, you know how you know would know the answer if you read my latest China article. Oh, nice. Ah, nice. that's a good one. Nice <laughs> organic plug there. One. I see what you yes. did. Yes. Yes. Um, cool. Oh, we got, I don't want to forget uh, these super chats that are coming in. We've got Dougal with oh, Dougal gifted five red team memberships. Thank you so much, Dougal, for doing that. I like. I really like this whole membership gifting feature. If you guys don't know, we've got we the membership program. It. The, the landing footage that we're seeing right now. Yes, like, the landing footage is beautiful. Was, it was so good. It was extremely good. Uh, and of course, being dead center, as always. Uh, but yeah, membership program exists. Way to support us. Cool perks. Sign up if you want. Um, Musical Wolves, thank you for the support. They said, when was the last NASA hardware launched to the moon prior to Rocket Lab's launch? And will we see lots more lunar launches soon? What's with all the... I'm like, there's a bunch of periods in this. It was very hard to... When was? The last. NASA hardware launched. All right, I'll stop. Um, 
Do we? Does anyone know the answer to this uh, excellent question that we got a super chat for? Last NASA hardware to the moon. This is like a Chris, no, uh, Chris just, G question. This here. is yeah. a very good question that I will have a very in my mind. I believe he's answer. might have been. Was it lunar reconnaissance orbiter or was it something Elcross, I think. between the two? I think Elcross, it was El Cross. El Cross. But I'm sense. I'm completely. Oh well, technically technically tested a flyby. <laughs> well, okay. Well, I, I just looked up a list and it was like, oh, test yeah. the flyby. So it's just went flyby. Okay. Yeah, All it was right. 2018. Yeah, so if you if you count if you count a flyby, I guess I would count a flyby. It's not really to the moon, but hey, spirit of the question. <laughs> um, we also have a generous super chat from Graham. Thank you, Graham. They say, I was wondering what the people working in launch control do when there are no launches. I imagine a lot of that's like simulation practice testing all that sort of stuff right like you're not just gonna go in on launch day and launch a rocket without having practiced it or simulated it uh, at least a bunch of times so i was thinking of a certain rocket that it's waiting for launch yeah there you <laughs> also, go also too long <laughs> correct me if i'm wrong but many of these especially in these smaller companies not yet maybe for spacex but like in these smaller companies these people that are working on launch control are also like engineers and other topics so they're probably able to pitch in other topics as well when they are not doing a countdown or content simulation yep that makes sense good question there from graham um let's see what else do we have future martian says team meatball you're wrong but thank you for the super chat also i guess at this point team meatball is losing in the poll but winning in super chat amounts so Somebody that likes Team Worm, come on, do it, do a, at least like a five <laughs> a five dollar and one cent super chat, and that way we can say Team Worm won both in the poll and also in monetary contributions from our viewers. And Senti, thank you for the super chat there. Bingo. All right, I think that does it for uh, SES twenty two. Do we have anything else on it? Oh, let me look for some questions. Derp. Yeah. What we um, do? Questions here. Here, here's one for you, Adrian. Uh, Vaquero is asking SpaceX or China for record launches this year. Who do you who do you take, Mister Mister China knowledge? Well, I it's kind of hard to predict because a SpaceX is kind of for me SpaceX is more the unknown because I, I am I'm expecting China to be around fifty five ish uh, because I think they will pick up a cadence in the second half. So, uh, and I think SpaceX will basically land at that area as well. So it might come down to like one or two launches. They are, they are on a close okay. race. They are, they are definitely on a close race. And, uh, um, but I think SpaceX, I, I will predict here SpaceX will, will be at, at the top at the end of this year. Right now All they right. are higher, right? Than, yes. than China. Yeah, it's okay. 26 to 22, I think. <laughs> Holy cow. Uh, tw well, 27. With SES oh yeah, 20, 20, sorry, 27 to 22. Okay, so five difference. Oh man, uh, while you guys Game were having on. actual discussion, <laughs> I, yeah, while you guys were having actual informed discussion, <laughs> I was looking at that uh, YouTube chat. Oh no. <laughs> and oh my god, we have a $69 <laughs> super chat from Stephen Churchill oh, saying boy. worm forever. So I think that seals the deal, worm forever. And just as if that wasn't enough, we all and also thank you, Stephen. Thank you so much, not only for the support, but also for. Is there anyone uh, that is team nothing? <laughs> yeah, well, you're wrong. If you're team nothing, you're wrong. Sorry, Alex. Team nothing. Come on. Uh, we've got Overlord with Team Worm, twenty dollars Canadian. Thank you, Overlord. We've got John Cass with uh, ten dollars Team Worm forever, and we've got Dank Jeb with Team Wormball. Dank Jeb, of course, with Wormball. Uh, Wormball is awful, but I'll tell you what, Wormball better than Meatball. There, I said it. Yes, uh, I agree. Mean, like, one uh, like, Meatball is that low on the, on yeah. the scale, yeah. that it still is beaten by Wormball. That's like, th that's what we are talking about. That's here. how bad Meatball is, is that Wormball beats Meatball. Uh, yeah. Okay. I feel so bad for all the Meatball fans. All the Meatball fans <laughs> today are just like, I hate this episode. Sorry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> oh man it's like it's like now they're gonna be like oh we hate nsf i I apologize meatball fans it's all in good fun uh, thomas is gonna like yell at me isn't thomas a, a meatball f anyways i digress thank you it's everybody for the support that was amazing it's worse that was amazing uh sorry dap dude <laughs> um 
Here's another question about SES22 real quick before we move on. Um, Westy the Third is saying, it seems like all the onboard cameras for launch and landing are getting amazing footage. Is this is it true this is down to Starlink connections for streaming? I don't think we know for sure, but it certainly would be one of the things that could have improved those views at, at like phases of I, flight like that. I mean, didn't SpaceX think... even say they were going to test such a thing because it would enable uh, communication during phases of flight such as that? I think Elon even confirmed on Twitter that at least that one amazing uh, footage we had of a landing was thanks to Starlink. So it seems they are um, they are utilizing that capability now. Oh yeah, yeah, our best landing video to date thanks to Starlink. So they are at least uh, for some of these landing videos they are using it. Um, so, but I'm not sure of, we cannot confirm always if it's used for everything and it, it, or it's just experimental, but I think at least it's kind of likely that there's a change Also, yeah. can I just add that I was, I was not watching this live. Uh, I was kind of on vacation last week, boo. Um, and I scrolled through next bike slide and I was like, what? Only second reuse? What's, yeah. what's this launch? Like... <laughs> This rocket only flew to space one time so far, and now it's the second time. Wow, that's lame. <laughs> I'd love to see it. It's it's amazing that uh, it's just so commonplace at this point that it's like, ew, two flights. Come on, get some more under your belt and come back. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, let's see, like... Patrick Patrick Ambil in chat saying, "Thank you for the super chat." Saying, "Team 1961 NASA Seal." Oh, that one. I know Which, what they're talking about. I'm out of the loop here. Yeah, it's it's. Like the very first NASA okay, logo. Yep, yeah. I'm on the I'm I'm, I'm on board. I I, so I, I think that's a problem. Worm, there, yeah, it's Worm 1961 NASA Seal Worm Ball Meatball. Mm. <laughs> uh, that's my <laughs> that is that is my official personal ranking. I do not speak for everybody at NASA Space Flight, but that's me. Oh, and there you that go. One, yeah, okay, that still beats the that one. Worm. Uh, the beat the worm, See, the Meatball. That Sorry. one at least has more things in it, like sparkles and stars, and <laughs> that's a little bit better. I think this looks like if you had to design a logo for your school science project, probably would look like this. No, like, it looks it looks sweet and retro, like it was designed in the '60s, which is always good. All right. Uh, anyways, we've just shoehorned an entire worm versus meatball topic into the list, and Dap Dude in the chat says, "Y'all are the worst. I quit." No, Dap Dude, no. Uh, Me too. Yeah, right. Now that we mention Starlink, just real quick, one minute, they actually got approval from the FCC to have mobile uh, Thank you. antennas. I was going so, to mention that, yeah. They have okay. officially gotten approval for mobile antennas on cars, boats, buses, RVs, not just like kayaks. RV Starlink where you park. <laughs> and then, what, what did, did you say, kayaks? Kayaks, yes. yeah, he said that. Never going to live that, that down. Never go. I don't hey, even, I need to go back and watch the, the live stream where day. that happened because I don't even remember how that happened. It was because I was like probably at Isla Park and I was like, oh, look, there's a guy on a kayak and where he shouldn't be. And then here we are. Uh, something like that. I, you, know, you throw Adrian the other day under the bus, so it's fair. True. And you yeah, know, let's move. Let's launch, move. Let's move. Yeah. That, that was on the launch. That was a good uh, thing. He got me back. He got me back good. Yes. Come um, on. Come on. All right. Let's I'm move on to the next thing, which is, of oh. course, Atlas V launching yep. two payloads, uh, WAFAV, the Wide Field of View, it's like an IR test uh, sensor, and also ESPO, which is a free-flying payload adapter, which I think is super cool. Um, that is the stream that <laughs> Alejandro was trying to mention just now, making a good segue, where I did indeed throw Adrian uh, under the bus because he does not like Saturn rockets. To... But we're not gonna. We're not gonna. No, 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 no. We're doing Atlas. You can't defend your your ro taste in rockets right now. We're staying on topic. <laughs> ha ha. Host powers. Um, let's see. So yeah, it was uh, it was a great launch. It uh, it it injected the payloads into their orbit. I'm not sure what else we want to say about this one, but uh, all, by all accounts, a beautiful launch. Even though there was some clouds. But, you know, got to love a Atlas with solids. And you got to love Atlas with a five meter fairing. Can't go wrong. I uh, also don't really like the visuals of Atlas, just to put that out here as well. So What? Atlas is beautiful. What is hey, No, okay. you know what's my problem with Atlas? Just to be... To, so people have time to ask their questions. I'm just stalling time here. But my problem is the 
unevenly distributed SRVs. That's the coolest part. Are you? That's no, I have a problem with part. missing cement. Like there needs <sighs> to be a symmetry X like somewhere. Okay, I mean that's fair. I do like nice symmetry, but also sometimes it's nice to go against the grain, especially like you like Delta the... Four Heavy, Adrian, which is very asymmetric in the in the ignition mm. sequence. Yeah, but still, you could basically th make a line in the middle, and it would be perfectly smirrod. I like that. All right. Um, I mean, so so your least favorite atlas would be the uh, the one with the single solid because it's, it's there's no symmetry there. No, is that... the worst one is I think one has like four, two and two, but the two the one or two are slightly offset, so it's like two <laughs> and that's then this two one. slightly. Yeah, that's. That's this oh. one, a five four one configuration. Yeah. yeah, and you can see in the in the imagery right there the uh, the boosters separating off, and the whole entire rocket like rapidly changing its pitch as it uh, continues into space. I always think that's super cool to see, uh, because when you have a different thrust profile, you probably want to be uh, flying an appropriate angle of attack. Um, oh, chat is just de diagnosing with OCD right now. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, chat. Um, uh, we said it was going to be a wild one today. All right, if you're not if you're not buckled in, maybe maybe buckle up. Um, Antonio, thank you for the very generous super chat with n uh, no statement, but either way, thank you so much. Uh, you don't always have to say something with a super chat. You can just super chat. Uh, but it gives me less to riff on. But Antonio, thank you. Matt Croc, part time tank watcher. Thank you for the support. They say as a person who has seen uh, May debates here in many debates here. Uh, and going to settle this current debate, the best worm, the best NASA logo is worm forever. Totally unbiased. Sorry, I for, apparently forgot how to read in the middle of that. Uh, but agreed, Matt, you are correct. We are just racking up the wins for worm here. And in the poll, worm is still 73%, two meatballs, 27. 20 minutes, 1,377 votes. Worm wins. Uh, Steve Bowen says the worm belongs on spacecraft the meatball belongs on shoulders i'm not really a fan of mixing the meatball and worm but thank you steve for the super chat uh i like how we're like we're going to talk about atlas also meatball and worm we're going to talk about spacex also meatball and worm we're going to talk about rocket lab also meatball and worm uh apologies for the, the fairing fairing separation <laughs> hey fairing set look I'm at that atlas is fairing it's, to it's separate when, when it wobbles Yes, I, I would love to see some footage uh, from their, from, from the five meter fairing from ULA in the same way that we've seen footage from SpaceX of their fairings. Like that crazy uh, video that they did where the fairing is like going through the, the plume of the rocket and it's just like purple and amazing and I can't even brain. Um, <laughs> I can't, I can't brain. I'm sorry. I dropped my coffee on the floor earlier. <laughs> my entire we really coffee. did. We saw pictures. Oh my God. Anyways, it's I still have to clean it. It's there's a puddle of coffee right over there that I have not cleaned yet because NASA Space Flight Live. Uh, musical wolves, <laughs> thank you for the support. They say ULA should have Paw Patrol Cloud Catcher. I do not know what that means. Does anybody know what that means? I nope. think it's referring to the to the bad weather that we saw. Okay, I know Paw Patrol is a show. That's about the extent of my knowledge. Yeah, same. Uh, that, and that's where David it stops. Dean, thank you for the support. They say our crane lifts the kind of overarc overreaching mechanism that spacex is looking to move away from um i i mean i want to put that back in the queue for later we'll talk about starship in a little bit but for now uh yeah that is the uh that is atlas and a whole bunch of digression so hope you enjoyed that let's move on now to virgin orbit and of course uh virgin orbit is your favorite air launcher out of mojave because they're really like the only. Do you, I mean, does Strata Launch count as an air launcher? I guess yes, because it's hypersonic. Actually, the only orbital air launcher out of Mojave. Um, no, I'm wrong because Stargazer. Anyways, <laughs> uh, but then again, Stargazer doesn't really isn't really used for Pegasus anymore. It's kind of like used for hypersonic military research, and so it's like suborbital again. It's kind of the same boat as Strata Launch. Anyways, focus, Jack. Uh, Virgin Orbit launched their mission. It uh, it is. Um, oh my god, they scrubbed uh, once and then a couple days later they did manage to get into the air. It was their first night launch, which was super cool to see. Uh, and uh, yeah, they successfully injected their, what was it, seven satellites uh, into orbit for the United States Space Force. Uh, it carried the STP-28A and ELNA-39 uh, missions, I guess you could say. Uh, ELNA for NASA and STP for the Space Force. And uh, 
yeah, just all, by all accounts, good to see some more air launch happening. I know maybe y'all aren't the biggest fans of air launch, but I certainly am. I think it's a super cool way to get payloads into orbit. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's, that is, uh, that is the basically the deal with Virgin Orbit's most recent launch. I did see some super cool views posted yeah. online of the webcast and in the webcast. And uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm a fan of a 747 carrying a rocket. I, is that is that a crime? <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I think we have our on our NSF Discord we have the king of air launching, which is of course our Harry Stranger, who uh, <laughs> always designed some very interesting air launching concepts. So at first I was like, yeah. I don't like it. But then I started doing it myself in Kerbal, and since then I like air launching because it's fun, it and is. Uh, yeah, I, I really, I really enjoy uh, seeing this this kind of like at first you think it's kind of monkey, but then you notice okay, that's this is kind of cool concept. Also, shout outs for them to uh, for providing sign language on the broadcast because that's super cool and inclusive, and I like that, and that's amazing. Keep doing that. Yeah, I uh, I was definitely impressed by that, and I definitely appreciated that. Uh, hopefully that becomes more of a trend. Definitely props to them for doing that. Thank you for, for pointing that out, Adrian. Um, let's see. I'm going to look and see if we have any questions on Virgin Orbit. Outdoors Man Show is asking, why is Virgin Orbit more successful than Pegasus? I think I can take a wild guess here. Cost. Pegasus, very expensive. I mean, I, I think it's basically down to that. Would you? What, what are your What are your guys' thoughts? Yeah, cost definitely. Yeah, what does a like... Pegasus cost? Like a hundred something million dollars? Like it's not cheap for a Pegasus. But at the time, uh, when uh, you know when Pegasus was developed, it was like a whole like ooh low cost, yay, compared to what was around at the time. But yeah. times change, thankfully. In fact, I think a SpaceX launch uh, in December of last year. The XP mission, which was supposed Undercut to be it. on a on a Pegasus, yep. and they actually were able to to move it. A Falcon 9 was actually cheaper, so just just think about that. Yeah, when Falcon 9, an entire full huge Falcon 9, at least compared to Pegasus, is cheaper than a Pegasus. That's a bad sign for the launch system. But hey, at least Stargazer, the last flying L1011, uh, still has a life doing spooky stuff for the military um hey at least it's, launcher, at least it's not be go ahead yeah yeah i was about to say launcher one is not really that cheaper compared to for example electron or others in the small set market but it has the added extra thing of you know being able to launch supposedly at any time uh in in any way because it has the the whole airplane thingy so it's a little bit more free in that in that sense, but you know, there's other opinions out there. Don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> just, yeah, just leave it at that. Uh, I yeah. see Nicholas in <laughs> chat asking any news about Sophia. Speaking of cool planes, Sophia's in New Zealand right now, um, and, but it's still going to be canceled, I think, in August, which is unfortunate. Maybe, uh, you know, maybe Sophia will have a second life doing something in the same way that Pegasus kind of has, but we'll see what happens. Um, not Pegasus, sorry, Stargazer. I love Stargazer. It's the last flying Lockheed L-1011. Anyways, Virgin Orbit. <laughs> we said this we was have... going to be a crazy one. You can't be mad at me. <laughs> we have the airplane thingy. <laughs> yeah, the yeah, whole... It's, it's definitely... It's. I think it's getting worse with every topic so yeah, far. Yeah, well, you know, yeah. by the time we get to Starship, we'll just be a bunch of five-year-olds running around and screaming. Uh, oh my yeah. god, this picture, like, huh. this is... Okay, that, that's a very amazing picture. Yeah, super cool picture. I was not able to uh, make it up to Mojave, but that would have been a fun thing to shoot. A uh, you know, 747 at night with a rocket attached to it. Come on, it looks awesome. And chat loves the whole airplane thingy thing, which is hilarious. Um, <laughs> let's see, really quick. Overlord Raven says, I assume cows prefer worms, not overly fond of meatballs. Should we take a poll? Thank you for the super chat. And Matt Croc. Thank you for the support. They say, to settle another, I like all of the NSF team, but if I had to pick a favorite, I would pick Nick and Sweeney because I met him, Starbase Fan Club Solved. Are we gonna, about to have a fan club battle too? Wow. Uh, thank you for the support, Mac. Uh, Matt. Uh, thank you to all. Oh, God. Oh, God. Scott Manley is in, is in chat. Everybody, everybody, be professional. Be professional. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> what's up? Hello, Scott. 
Uh, he said that he loved their drone shots of takeoff. Yeah, that was super cool. Gotta love that. Um, let's see here. Any more Virgin Orbit questions? Sean Somebody O'Brien... in the chat said the Dolt is here. Which, like, <laughs> okay, yeah, true. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Sean O'Brien says, can Virgin Orbit carry Launcher 1 to any major airport and integrate a payload in a hangar there? I don't even think they need... A payload they have like a whole containerized system if i'm not mistaken they're like a portable system in fact yeah. they're going to do a launch out of england uh is that later this year i forget um, yeah i think they said august september more or less so the next launch after this one nice so yeah that is definitely one of their selling points they can come to you uh you don't have to necessarily go to them um cool so that is virgin orbit I guess progressing down the uh, the topic list here and the insanity chain. <laughs> oh no, <laughs> Alex, talk to us about relativity. Oh yeah, well, this one is is one of those big news contracts that uh, we talked about a, a couple of months ago about the big Amazon deal. This one is sort of in that sense, uh, mostly because of the of the huge amount of of. Um, confidence put into a new rocket, which is Terran R, or Relativity Space. So we have uh, Team Ellis announced this week that they're going to be launching uh, one web satellites on Terran R, which is their uh, new uh, fully reusable 3D printed rocket that, we're, that they're going to be that they're going to be launching. Um, I think it was 2024. This one is actually for launches in 2025. And people might be wondering, OK, what wasn't this thing about OneWeb, uh, like they, they were about to launch all the whole constellation, why launch now in 2025? Well, that's a new generation constellation, sort of like Starlink having the first generation constellation and then a second one, which is coming up on Starship. We'll talk about that later. Uh, but OneWeb is also having another second generation. So they're going to have the first one, which is going to be completed using... Um, a Falcon 9, by the way, <laughs> and it's also going to be launched by ISROS. Uh, I think it's the GSLV, uh, one of the GSLV there. They have Mark II and Mark III, I cannot remember right now which one, but the second generation is now being uh, confirmed as launching on Terranar. So this is like the big news because we expect the second generation to actually be like, instead of a few hundred satellites, instead of being 600 and something satellites, it's going to be thousands of satellites, sort of also like Starlink, where they went from five, uh, 4,000 and something to almost 30,000 satellites on Starlink 2. So this is going to be sort of the same in that sense. And actually, it's compelling for them to, to actually, you know, go to a reusable rocket, a fully reusable rocket that can launch more frequently. And, you know, by the time of of the of 2025 perhaps Terran R is is already launching so we'll see what happens with that yeah i'm super excited for relativity and 3d printed rockets in general it seems like uh, the sort of area where additive manufacturing might be able to make a big difference in cost of access to space adrian it's... you look like you have something to say what what is what is on your mind my friend yeah i'm always thinking about like there's this huge battle going on between all of these small set and small launcher companies and these in the early stages let's frame it like that it launches uh, in the early stages and a contract like this uh, totally cha can change the trajectory that uh, the company is taking because suddenly you have maybe not to worry about cash flow for a few more months or even years and you can basically develop a bit more um, without having to worry that your next launch could endanger the company because most of these small companies kind of operate on a very limited uh, income and cash flow basis so this is a big contract especially for these these not fully established companies yet. So um, I'm always happy to see them getting these kind of contracts because I kind of like what they're uh, what Terran is doing, and I also like uh, I, I also like the the that they are were bold enough to announce a fully reusable rocket, which I think I mean at least they did it so far. Other companies were not bold enough to do that yet. So I really like this, and I I I really enjoy reading this. And I hope they succeed with their rockets. 
Yeah, and on that on that same note, uh, I should point out this is just one customer announced, but they said they have a total of five for Terranar. So it's that that's a good amount of of customers in terms of you know the, the for for a racket that that hasn't even been produced yet. I don't think even the the the, the engines are still fully developed. So we 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 have a, a decent amount of customers, and also uh, we are you were talking about these small set companies, and people might be wondering, well, Terran R is a big rocket, like right? it's it's something like um, twenty tons to low Earth orbit, fully reusable. Why small set? Well, because Relativity has another rocket, Terran One, which is right now out of the Cape, and it's being tested for pre for, for its first flight, its own pre flight. Um, what are we showing here? The Terran One okay. page. Okay, it's yeah. That's the Terran, the Terran R. R. Yeah. Terran R. Yep. And Terran then R. the Terran One is right now out of the Cape. It's been tested. I think they did cold flow uh, propellant tests and things like that. And once they test all of it, like the end test will be to do a full mission duration burn of the nine Eon engines on, on the first stage. And that's going to be like once it is it is fully uh, fully tested. They're going to put the second stage. Well, they're, they're going to put it back on the hangar. They're going to do the whole iteration thing. This one was, was even put with a crane. It wasn't even put with a, with a strong back thing that they have. It's going to be all just uh, pre-launch processing just as normal. And and actually, one of the things from... So the their, their, their whole evolution path that they're having is to fly the first three Terran 1 missions with the Eon 1 engine nine of them on the first stage but then they're gonna they're gonna switch to the eon r engine which is the one that is going to be flying on terran r so they're going to fly that engine before they actually fly it on the on, on this one on this big rocket so they're going to have uh, a little bit of experience flying it what a horrible carpet what? <laughs> sorry <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> I was like, oh, God, can he see my carpet? But then I was like, wait, I have hardwood floors. And then I looked at the screen and saw the carpet. That's not that bad. It's like kind of cool grayscale. Anyways, Texas carpet watchers now. Uh, German carpet watchers. Uh -huh. And I also, I, one thing I uh, want to point out since we are, I think we are good on time. Um, I Some people that talk to me more often know that I'm really invested in this whole first methane rocket to orbit thing. <laughs> and they're in the competition. So it's kind of cool that they are with Terran 1. So so for context, so far, no rocket that is based on methane uh, has reached orbit. So we have Starship from SpaceX. We have Zukwe 2 from, uh, from Landspace. Uh, we have, uh, we have uh, Terran 1 from uh, Relativity. And we have... That's the one I'm missing. Oh, Vulcan uh, from <laughs> your... <laughs> From ULA, which is a great segue coming up, and uh, they're kind of in the competition right now um, for um, being the first methane-based rocket to orbit, which is a really fun kind of micro competition over multiple continents going on right now, which I really enjoy following. Yeah, it sort of speaks here, to the the, to methane's uh, methane's utility as a fuel. That so many different rocket companies across so many different uh, you know organizations and just around the world, everybody's pursuing a methane fueled rocket. Uh, just it makes sense, I guess, in terms of reuse because it doesn't coke on the turbo pumps as much. I'm already at the edge of my knowledge, but yes, methane fuel for rockets very good. Uh, and we were talking about the contract. Oh my god. Crispy, Crispy just did a <laughs> relativity <laughs> mission control room carpet poll. I'm going to say yes. I all know. can say I'm whatever you know. Your team know. Well, clearly. The, the, the chat on YouTube. You got so you to gotta watch the YouTube chat. It's it's where all the fun happens. Uh, holy, holy cow. 244 votes already, <laughs> and the answer is 48% no, 12% undecided, 40% yes. So <laughs> now I can you, see that. You heard it here. Uh, in more serious news, the uh, the total contract over 1.2 billion for Relativity to launch one web sats is huge. And Scott Manley brings up a really good point in chat, saying a big contract is what made SpaceX switch from Falcon 1 to Falcon 9, uh, which I believe that was the CRS contract from NASA, right? Uh, so 
yeah. you know, who who knows uh, what the future holds quite for relativity, but hopefully Terran 1 goes through its processing flow and testing flow and we get to see an orbital a first orbital launch attempt with that rocket here coming up soon. What what are you going to say? One of the things yeah, one of the things that I really like about this company compared to the other ones is actually the uh, among the small sat companies, it's the one that is most um valued, you know, with, with all the capital investments and everything that they have private yeah. and all of that. And they are not public, so they are not that subject to all the changes in the public market and everything. I don't know too much about economics, but I I guess that's fine for them right now. Um but I, I do know that all of these huge contracts actually boost a lot that confidence in, in investors. And I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, the next round of funding that they have or whatever, they get millions and millions just like, take my money, you know, kind of thing from from the from the investors. So, yeah. Well, that's good because developing new rockets is an extremely capital-intensive endeavor. And yeah. uh, you, you need cash to burn to make, uh, you know, not only... A, one rocket, but two rockets, uh, and all of the infrastructure that surrounds it. It's it's not cheap, um, and I I do yeah. appreciate in a, in a way that they did not go the whole like SPAC route as so many other companies where they like you know suddenly bam they're publicly traded then they're subject to the whims of investors and they're subject to, to uh, having to disclose things in very specific ways for the uh, Fed you know the F E F F E F F E C I don't know uh, I, for, I forget the three letters F E C Thank you, thank you. SEC, FEC is Federal Election. Anyways, uh, <laughs> but yeah, you know, different strokes for different companies or folks, and uh, you know, they've they've chosen their path, and we will have to just keep watching and see how it goes. More power to them. Um, I think that's. Oh, well, let me look for some viewer questions. Do we have any viewer questions for relativity? Uh. Sailing Someday says, team yes on carpet. You can spill coffee and not make it worse. Speaking of spilling coffee. <laughs> oh, God. I you could need such a carpet. Yeah, I, I would. And luckily, I have hardwood floors, but still. Or it's not even hardwood. It's fake hardwood. It's like laminate on top of concrete. Anyways, um, let's see. Let's see. I'm not seeing a lot of relativity questions here. Super chat's really So quick. you would say the oh, uh, queue is relatively empty? All right, Super Chats. David Dean. Uh, <laughs> Super Chat, thank, thank you so much, David Dean, for the support. Oh, wait, that's the same one about the crane lifts. Uh, we'll, go, we'll get to that when we do Starship. Um, Olav Folin, thank you for the support. They say running around and screaming. I assume they mean us. Rankly, thank you for the, the, the support there. Uh, saying, seeing pieces of, the Artemis, uh, of Artemis come together makes this 47-year-old kid excited for the inevitable moment we set foot back on the moon. Can't wait. Indeed. I think we're all super excited. Uh, SLS costs and delays and issues aside, and the whole Artemis program, including SLS, is going to be so, 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 so cool to, uh, to see get underway uh, in earnest. So definitely very excited to see Boots back on the moon, hopefully soon. I'm seeing hey, a question right now. How come Relativity get contracts when they haven't launched ones? Well, you know, most companies actually need to have a contract to launch first. Like you gotta need to to build up a, a little bit of a of a launch queue to be able to to launch, you know. And so things like that happen, for example, with the SpaceX Falcon One, Falcon Nine. And if I remember correctly, one of the things that Wine Shotwell was talking about, uh, you know, reminiscing that those those moments, she just sell the the the, the team and the values and like the, the whole goal and try to convince investors that you know our whole thing actually matters it's valuable please give us money so that's the whole thing right uh but try to convince people it's actually sort of the 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 whole thing of how it goes to to actually be able to to get launches before you actually launch first i also want to add that uh not launches is not the only thing you can look at to get a scope about a launch company. If you are an investor, and especially if you're like in these early um, days uh, as, a, as a fund giver for these missions, you probably have some sort uh, of angle that uh, that you can basically judge your perspective on and basically base your decision if you want to uh, give them money on. And uh, these kind of contracts not only look at the launch, they are looking at the company as a whole. 
And there are also sometimes the possibility to have clauses in these launch contracts. For example, milestone-based contracts, contracts that will only pay you uh, based by mission. It's not like Relativity might not get just the blank check of 1.2 billion and they're like, okay, have fun. Um, yeah, these contracts are complicated uh, kind of uh, paperwork and they are structured in a way to protect both parties. Yeah, very good point. Uh, and the poll for the carpet is now at 770 votes. Adrian and I are full on warring in chat uh, <laughs> about the carpet. Uh, oh no, 39% yes, 41% no. I think that means Adrian wins. Good one, right. chat. A good one. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, that is it for relativity. I think no. definitely excited to see uh, another rocket that's taking part of the whole methane race to space. You know coming online and we'll see we'll see what happens with the that big contract speaking of methane rockets i i yeah i know what is i oh my gosh yeah I'm speaking of methane rockets about china no <laughs> adrian do you want to tell us about the cool engine photos that we got to see the other day yes we are uh spoiled with engine photos of the be4 right now on twitter which uh of course are not these are not pathfinder engines anymore or like um, yeah, some some sort of test engines. These are the flight engines for for Vulcan Flight One. Uh, we saw both actually, if I recall correctly. And this time, it's not only the nozzle. Uh, this time, it's uh, it's more like the business part of the engine, uh, which uh, is very exciting to me because uh, I I think we all, at least I, want to see uh, Vulcan fly, and uh, I am really excited to to see these be for being lit up for the first time, which will be on Vulcan, um, which will fly first before New Glenn will fly a few re years down the line. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm really excited to, to see these, and I'm really excited to uh, uh, see this next generation of ULA rocket uh, basically take shape. And um, yeah, so, so really cool to see. And they look complicated. Like, seeing these kind of engines up close with like, all these details and... Um, yeah, I, I'm glad that I'm just a person that needs to talk in the uh, in the internet about rockets and not design rockets. Because, wow, carpet I'm wins! Bad at that. Carpet <laughs> wins! Sorry, carpet wins! No, <laughs> no. <laughs> but yeah, it is a that is a super super cool looking engine. I'm Jack super glad. Jack, while looking at carpet. You well, you know, you know what? Uh, I won, so. But Chris, Chris did also close the poll immediately once yes like eked up. It, they were tied for a that's, while. That's kind of rigged. Yeah, Just, a little bit. But no. I'm not complaining because I won. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, that's the the BE4 flight engines for Vulcan. It's gonna be awesome. I like you, Adrian. I'm super excited for Vulcan, uh, and uh, we will have to uh, keep our eyes on that. I mean, yeah, the engine looks complicated, but it's uh, it's definitely no worse than than Raptor, and it looks like a really it's just a good looking engine um yes. definitely a fan definitely going to be excited to attempt some engine close-up remote shots of that and you just wait for it wait for the deluge of engine close-ups uh when vulcan flies for the first time it's going to be awesome just to see a giant shock diamond made out of blue methane burning it's going to be awesome i'm excited yes um, a lot of blue fire in your, our future like yeah. there will be there will be blue fire fire in our future I'm excited. Um, okay, that is the Vulcan engine thing. Uh, let's move on to the next thing and also progress down the insanity chain. Uh, <laughs> we just Speaking did a poll on insanity. carpet. <laughs> uh, um, <laughs> cool. This one, is, the next topic is SLS rolling back into the VAB after the whole wet dress rehearsal thing it redid. Adrian, you want to talk to us about that? Yes. Uh, so SLS is on its way back to the VAP um, to uh, oh, hopefully... Boy. Yeah, I'm starting the next war. Uh, for the last yeah. time, hopefully. Uh, because this, uh, after NASA basically concluded that the current tests are um, sufficient to complete the wet dress rehearsal campaign, uh, now SLS goes back to the VAP to prepare for launch. Like, they will now fix the last few things. They will uh, install, install everything that is needed for separation of the stages. And after that, and after the RF testing of the, um, of the flight termination system and everything, like installation, 
they are ready. They they can roll it out, and after this, uh, it's um, it's it's time for SLS to fly the Artemis One mission, which right now targets uh, let me the August twenty three to September six window. So we might only be like two ish months away from SLS flying, pending put possible more thank you things coming up thank yeah. you with an asterisk yeah it's a but, big asterisk but still exciting uh yes oh god people in chat are saying vab or vab yeah. next poll please i'm Chris already B. waiting for, for people so, to, to be voting there my opinion is if you say slick you have to say vab but isn't vab like not it's you're not supposed to say vab i'm pretty sure but I like I, saying that. I, I will. I'm Team Vap. <laughs> All right. Well. <laughs> <laughs> oh my! No, where are the rails? There are no rails. Uh, so yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm. I don't know what more we really want to say about SLS. I'll look for some SLS questions if y'all have any. But yeah, it rolled back to the Vab. It's in the Vab, uh, or VAB. <laughs> Chris B, where yes. are you with this poll, man? We need you. Uh, <laughs> Run. <laughs> John in chat says when poll. Uh, that's a nice throwback. Um, cool. Let's see. Overlord Raven saying, adding a worm logo to that carpet would put it over the top. I mean, adding a worm logo to anything puts it over the top. Thank you for the support there, Raven. John Malkin, thank you for the support. They say, can we compare floorings in all mission controls? Just kidding. Uh, I think I know what our next, uh, I mean, our next feature well, is going to be. If this... that is an excuse to just show the control rooms and, you know, have access to them, we're not complaining about that. Just call SpaceX, up every launch provider LA, and be like, hey, you know? we're doing a video on launch control room carpet. Can yeah. you get a tour? And they're like, what is, what, who are you? Never call <laughs> us again. <laughs> One thing about SLS, again, I, um, I, uh, First off, thanks for Philip for letting me write one SLS article. It was amazing. I, lo I learned so much about this rocket. And I saw this picture by Thomas, which is in the article, I think, which it shows it on, like, in full, full size. Uh, rolling down um, to the to the fab, and a this rocket is big, and b I kind of like how it looks. Like I love yep. how SLS looks so so amazingly powerful, and uh, yep. I'm by by the day I'm getting. I, I know some people might not like the statement, but by the day I'm getting more and more excited for Artemis One, and I cannot wait to see this rocket launch. So what you're saying is they should delay a whole bunch more so that you have more days to get more excited. That was not was I, what I was applying, but interesting way to see that. You um, looked so hurt. I'm, you looked genuinely hurt at my implication. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it felt a bit harsh. <clears throat> but yeah, I'm, I'm also super excited for, uh, for SLS. I mean, those solid rocket boosters are amazing. They sounded amazing when the shuttle launched, and I only expect them to sound even more amazing with an extra shuttle main engine alongside them. That's going to be awesome. I cannot wait. Oh, somebody in chat makes a good point. If it's VAP, I kind of have to call it in, in, in instead of NSF. And FA no, do we, do we have to call it? And do we have to call it SLIS instead of SLS? <laughs> well... See? See? Uh -huh. Well, but but it is slick. I yeah. Mean, we, yeah, we but can that's call not... it SLC. Yeah, I don't know if that's enough to stand on, but so the the poll the poll did happen, and uh, VAB is currently w soundly winning at seventy one percent to twenty nine. I'm calling you out, Chad, for inconsistency. Um, just putting it out there, Chad. Um, that's that's all of what I say. I love you, Chad. You can do no wrong. Don't don't listen to you know Adrian. Adrian calling you out. No, no, no. We we love you, Chad. <laughs> I will just be a complete uh, crazy person. I love you, Chad. Uh okay, let's see. Um Who put SLS. Us all three on a show. Yeah, this is what happens. Uh music we know it's it's known by it's been what, uh an hour of this? So yeah, we it's just this is everyone's used to it at this point. Um Musical Wolves, thank you for the support. They say SLS still launching someday. Ooh, iceburn. Um cool. Oh, we do have a uh, going back a bit, uh, sorry, but it's a good question. Jelly is asking, how much will Vulcan engines differ from New Glenn engines? Uh, 
New Glenn engines are going to need to be reused, right? The Vulcan engines are, they're still BE4s, but they're not designed for reuse. Is that correct? Well, down the line, uh, they plan to reuse both because the smart, smart reuse. reuse is also planned for, uh, for um, Vulcan. And it sounded like, especially with now with the big contracts are getting announced for Vulcan, um, that they are. At least they have not forgot about it yet. So I'm kind of optimistic that down the line they will both use reusable engines because I like reusable. Um, we all like reusable, I think. And uh, but I'm not sure. I think um, I think we have no deeper knowledge about the difference in design between uh, BE4 for uh, one flight versus reusable. But I could imagine there is some some sort of difference in, in design and like some sort of specifications that would change based on if you want to fly an engine once or over and over again. Makes yeah, sense. and also um, there, are, there are, well, there's at least one, one difference between both is that for New Glenn, the B4 engines have to relight after it's already done its flight because then it has to land. It doesn't do a re-entry burn, just like, uh, you know, Falcon 9 doesn't, uh, does do a, a re-entry burn. Starship, you know, super heavy in, in this case, won't do a re-entry burn. So New Glenn is going to be sort of the same in that in that sense. But it's going to be doing a landing burn. So it's got to have, you know, all the bits to be able to reignite. Whereas the ones on Vulcan, even with a smart reuse, you don't need them to be able to relight because it, it, it burns once and it just does the whole thing. The, the tanks just deplete of all the things, you know, all the methane, all the oxygen and everything, and it's just the engine section detaches and lands. And so that's another thing that there could be a difference between the New Glenn version and the Vulcan version, because if you can strip down the engine, that's better, because it's things that you don't need, so you don't put it in the first place, and it's less dry mass and all of that, you know, optimization. Makes sense. Uh, SLS questions. Brock Bowers is asking, what's with the tagline NASA's Mega Moon Rocket? Hmm. We're doing Do we this. want to touch that? We're Do doing we... this. I just touched okay. it. I, we're touching it. It's being touched. It's like this close. Can I... I hate I, it. I, I... I'm just going to go right off the bat. I hate it. It's, it's smart branding. I get it because when they call it that and the public calls it that and the news media calls it that, people will know this rocket is big and it's going to the moon. But... Mega Moon Rocket. I mean, imagine the lack of dignity in class if we called Saturn V the Ultra Mooner or something. Like, it's just, it's, it sounds like a, like an XKCD comic. I just don't, uh, I don't like Mega Moon Rocket. But everyone likes different things. If you like Mega Moon Rocket, that's okay. What, what were you going to say, Adrian? I don't know if I want to say it anymore. Do it. Because just do it. Just, just do I, it. I think it's a better name than SLS. Wow. Okay. Shots fired. But I, but I also think SLS is not a good name. I mean, no, it's no. not great. Space launch system. It's like generic rocket name one. Um, I guess yeah, it's it. like it's like if you would you call your uh, rocket rocket free or something like? Why would you? Oh, with, with oh. things I'm gonna be the same as as the worm logo and, and the carpet thing. I don't like either. It's just like SLS is some generic name. And Mega Moon it's Rocket, and, so like, and we have a poll. It's also Mega Moon Rocket. <laughs> we, and we yeah. have a poll. We the have a poll. Uh, okay. Don't well, care. We'll, if you <laughs> if you uh, if you don't care, if you like it or you hate it, weigh in on the latest poll, and uh, we'll come back to that in a minute here. Oh man, Chris, this is this is a good one. We're just going ham today. Uh, <laughs> let's yeah. see. Um, I'm looking. For another SLS question. Will SLS fly from Vandenberg? No. Quit breaking my heart. Although an SLS at Slick 6. I think I, I think I just had like an image of something divine. How amazing would that be? Uh, SLS at Slick 6. Something's got to go to Slick 6 after, after Delta Heavy's done. Anyways. Yeah, probably the demolition devices to... <laughs> I thought we were friends, Adrian. I thought, I mean, we, were, I thought what, we were pals. What could okay. be better than the most magnificent rocket Delta IV Heavy like finishing your launch pad career? 
I'm <laughs> I'm the launch pad having a second life with other cool rock. What is wrong with it? Is this because I threw you under the bus on the Atlas stream? Is this, <laughs> is this no. your revenge? <laughs> no. All right. Well, but to be fair, I should be my revenge, actually. Well, just consider it that now. Um, moving on from SLS, and just to follow up, the poll is at fifty-three percent uh, people hate Mega Moon Rocket, fifteen percent people love it so much, and thirty-two percent don't care. If you my don't team care, is... go ahead. My team is half the size than the don't care people. Yeah. Like, if you, what, if you don't care, I envy you because I hate it. Wait, I wish I could just turn off the part of my brain that dislikes it. That'd be great um cool well that is sls it's back in the vab and uh yeah do we want to do this next one or do we want to go straight to starship what do you think i think we should go to shiny rocket all right it's at starship this point it's starship time i need like a i really do need to get a soundboard so i can do the whole like horse crack horse horse whinny whip crack whip crack thing i can like, do like a siren like me 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 starship time uh it's starship time booster seven on the orbital launch mount with raptor 2 engines installed and we're coming up on uh, hopefully static fire testing soon. They've been doing testing on B7.1, that test tank right there with the that's got the elliptical dome in it, right? The E dome. No, that's the that's the other one. So they have two test tanks at the at the launch site right now. They have the 7.1 and then the other one, the the E dome thing. Oh, okay. Whatever it's called, so it's like out there. All right. Uh, and yeah, booster seven has been, has been tested, uh, significantly, right? What, what have we, what have we seen them doing with booster? I remember seeing the other day, there was like that super cool venting coming from the top four vents, uh, after one of the tests, it was like a cryo, right? Yeah. It looked uh, like well, pressure. Yeah. It, it, it looked more like pressure testing or something. Okay. We didn't see any frost on it. Got it. Okay. And also we saw, I think. Was it an igniter test? Yeah. Uh, yeah, we saw an igniter test of the uh, of the engine igniters at the pad. So that's also kind of cool. So they are basically, if you have a list of things that need to happen before you can static fire a booster, that list should be almost empty. And that's very exciting. And also, which is a very cool milestone in the Starship program, I think, Based on if you believe that B7 and Ship 24 will fly the orbital flight campaign, the full first orbital stack has all of its engines, which is, um, in my opinion, a crazy amazing milestone in the program. Right now, they are fully equipped with engines. They are having a booster that is sitting there with all of the engines installed. There we have it. Like That picture is straight up amazing. Um, mm -hmm. And it's, yeah, every engine is installed. This booster has everything it needs to uh, do its job. And also the same goes for the ship, which also has all six engines installed. So we have every Raptor that is needed for an orbital test flight on this combination of prototypes right now, which is amazing. Yep, sure enough, all the engines are there and integrated on the vehicles. So gotta love it. Um, we did have a question. Let me see if I can find it right off the bat. Uh, yeah, looking at that engine uh, image again of the booster, uh, this is something I've always wondered. I like always. Uh, Jack Don't Daniel. Ask what? Okay. Wh what? It's gonna what? be the two points. It's gonna be the two points. No, I know. I know, I, I know okay. about the two points. That's the next question. I know about the two points. Okay. <laughs> no. Okay. Can you can you let me do my host thing, please? <laughs> okay. Sorry. okay, okay. <laughs> Do you want to host? You do want to think for it. Well, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> there you go. Oh, man. Um, Jack Daniels asking, the engine bells had several different patterns of use, and some looked clean. Would that suggest not all have been fully tested? I don't necessarily think so, but I, I've always wondered what is with the different use patterns, because all of these engines, as to our knowledge, have been acceptance tested down at McGregor. Shout out to McGregor Live, where you can watch these tests. Uh, on our stream, Adrian, go ahead. What? What do you? What do you? I was going to do a make regular live plug. So, um, but I will still I will ignore that you did it and just do what I plan to do, which is well, if you watch make regular live, you will see that these tests often ver have a like variation in length and in intensity. So they are probably testing 
a different kind of profiles with these engines and feel confident doing that. So with that, they're probably producing uh, different results in how the nozzle uh, changes during the test. And also it could be things like maybe some of them were kind of cleaned up. Maybe some of them had a different kind of transport or store. Like there's different reasons why nozzles can be just different in color. And I think it's just coming down to different testing on these Raptor engines and McGregor that you can watch on McGregor Live. Yeah, and not all, um, like, they could have conceivably fired a single nozzle on multiple different Raptors, but put that nozzle on different power heads, and thus a single nozzle could have been used for a significant amount of time and be extra scorchy. I'm completely making stuff up here, but... Oh yeah, if if anybody actually really knows, um, please DM me because that I would love to know like the specifics. Like the ones that are really white have only been fired for like ten seconds. The ones that are super scorchy, we've reused the nozzle on or whatever the deal is there. Um, but I, I do think of... we I do think all of the engines on the booster have been acceptance tested. To answer Jack Daniel's question, uh, I don't think they've put any untested engines on there. I can think of a, of of another reason. I think it it ties a little bit with what Adrian was talking about. Uh, that perhaps for a few engines, they just didn't need as much firing time to to know. Hey, now the engine is is okay. We actually see some of the engines are like SN sixty something, you know, and others are like SN twenty something. So perhaps the ones that are were the first ones, those needed more time on the stand for some reason. Like they just needed more data to be like, okay, this. This engine is now okay to fly, uh, whereas probably the next ones, you know, the, the ones that are later on, if they had more testing on other engines that were more development engines or test engines, um, perhaps that could also be a reason why some look more tested, sort of like so the visual thing, whereas others look uh, less tested in that sense. Probably something along those lines that could be also a reason. Yeah, that makes sense. Good hypothesis. We're, we're, are, does that mean we're doing science? If that's a hy if you have a hypothesis, does that mean we're doing science? Yes. I guess we yeah. have to. This is a, uh, this is a science podcast now. <laughs> this, this is just three nerds just talking about rocket engines, you know, as if we were sort of experts. But hey, we try to to be as honest. As I love, try to be. I love how we are pretending to be sort of experts and like yeah, yeah. Right? resounding <laughs> review I mean, we try to be as least as, as we try to be as mm. <laughs> we, we try, try to be incorrect be <laughs> we try to be incorrect as little as possible how about that uh, yes and we have a oh, new poll. poll of course mega moon rocket uh was uh the one that won there people said they make it 74 percent said they didn't didn't like mega moon rocket uh, thirty-three percent didn't care, so almost the huh. same amount didn't care, and then twenty percent, roughly, uh, love it so much with a thousand votes, I, give or take. Thankfully, he didn't include Saturn Five, otherwise we will know Adrian's re response to that. Um, <laughs> uh, well, I would love to know your answer to the poll that just was posted, um, if I if I may ask, because what right? will reach orbit first, SLS or Starship? Kind of depends on how you define orbit, right? Like. Uh, Oh, I mean, successful first test flight. Like, I, I don't want to get into this definition of McDowell line or something. And uh, just just if it's if the test flight looks good, it's good. Um, this is really tough. Yes, I know. Alejandro, you go first. Oh, come on. Don't do that. <laughs> no, you go first. Go, you go oh, first. Boy. I'm the host. I get to do that. You go. go you go. <laughs> That's uh, I, I've already said that a few times, Raptor side chats and everything. Um, I, th I think they're going to be very close together. But I, I, won't, I won't really say, oh, it's a Starship or it's SLS. Well, that's the question, Alex. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, I, I choose third option. Don't ask me which is my fifth child. Yeah, that's, oh, I think. whoa, boo. That's, uh, boo. I, I just think it's going to be very, very, I don't know, close together, who's, perhaps. Who's been, is, it, is it Chris G that's been saying this whole time that SLS yeah. and Starship are going to launch within the same week of each other, which yeah. I'm fine <laughs> with this. That sounds amazing to me. But Although, if you think you, about it, get... it's going to be NSF hell time. It's going to be like, ah, running around, everyone. And, and... Panic circles. 
<laughs> yeah. Michael will successfully be the, the first person we in the world this. that gets... We need this other thing, yeah. It's gonna be Michael yeah. will be the first person in the world that successfully managed to get negative sleep. Yes, he will, <laughs> he will transcend his human body and become a being of pure light and energy that occupies a series of computers and monitors on his desk and controls all things on the internet. <laughs> oh, also, oh, for man. the record, I think it will be SLS. Okay, SLS for you. I... I'm also going to go SLS, only because I feel like they're going to run into issues with Booster 7 static fire testing. They've never static fired a booster except for Booster 3, which do you even want to count that? And it was just a subset of engines. If they are really truly going to be working their way up to a 33 engine static fire with the booster, uh, with Booster 7, who knows? Who knows what, could, uh, what delays could happen? I mean, hopefully nothing bad happens to the vehicle or the launch site itself. But also, uh, you know, they could have to swap out a bunch of engines or they could discover, you know, an issue with the thermal shielding that needs some time to rework. Or like we saw with, what was it, Ship, was it Ship 24 where they uh, broke a, like one of the interior pipes when they were doing a cryo test and had to like full on like pull the pipe it out. Was and put a new one. It was also the booster too. I was going to get there. Thank you. They've booster had seven. to pull out. They've had to pull out and replace pipes in both. Oh, the ship and the now, yeah, 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 yeah. It was Thanks. both this booster and the ship. So, yes. Yeah. So, so there is precedent. Their, their is what I'm saying. Yeah. There is precedent. Um, <laughs> Alex is like Mr. Jump the gun today. Uh, <laughs> just keeping me on my toes. Um, let's see. So yeah, I guess we'll go back to that engine shot once again. And Senti is asking, what are those two silver discs under Super Heavy B7? The right one has bolts. Do we know asked, what those are? I asked that Alex yesterday, and he replied that everybody asked him that, and he uh, doesn't know. And please stop asking him that. Yeah, I think my that was, a... was like was like I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, we don't know. It's uh, I have like two th things that I read so far that I like. One is hey vents, um, but that would not fit with previous designs of engine vents we saw on Starship, uh, because I looked through some old pictures I have, and the engine vents are kind of attached to the like they're close to the engine and every engine, and also why it's only two there and yeah doesn't like. It doesn't fit for me. It, I, I, I don't dig that theory. Uh, the other theory I saw was burst disc. Burst disc? Yeah, there are, there are a few things that I like saw. I yeah. saw. Yeah, I saw that the burst disc thing. And uh, while I don't know what they are, I do think that they are probably not burst discs because you will want that at the top of the tank rather than the bottom. Because at the bottom, you will basically have all the liquid coming back coming out instead of having all the gas which is usually at the top of the tank so that's one of the, th the things that i was thinking about and i i do remember at least for for ship of, of like sm15 back sm8 sm9 all of these uh ships that had the the sort of um ah uh, what it is uh the Ah, the hops. Excuse me. The 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 boosters. That the, excuse me. The ships that did the the hops did have two pipes uh, coming out from the from the bottom dome, and and yeah, I I think someone is actually pointing that out in chat that they had two th uh, two pipes on the bottom uh, dome. I'm I'm sorry. I'm I'm lagging right now. I don't know why. And it actually was able to do all the dump during the during the flight. Uh, I have no idea if that's related. Someone actually pointed out on chat that might be for uh, for radar for landing or something like that. Sensors for landing. I don't think that's going to be in that place. Probably on the side of the of the rocket. But it's true that, for example, on Falcon 9, it's also near the bottom of the rocket. I have no idea how it's actually going to be doing that. I mean. <sighs> If you think about the dome, like the, the aft dome, it's a big sump that collects all the locks, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and these two pipes are sort of near the center of that. And so they're at the bottom, the very bottom, bottom of the 
the locks tank. In fact, they're part of that center thrust puck, which is kind of flat, right? So, so if you wanted to have some sort of vent there to get rid of, because it's the bottom tank is a locks tank, right? Yeah. I mean, it, it, it does look like the ones that the ships had uh, for the hops. As I was saying, the, during the, the ships, hops, they and did the ships dumped locks. locks. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, hmm. And yeah, also because so... if you think about it, uh, for the what what happens? What's what's going on? This <laughs> uh, something what, in the back if, if you think about it, for the ships, they needed to dump the locks because they switched to the header tanks, and so the 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 main locks tank had a little a little bit of leftover locks. So you need to dump that because it's it's mass that you don't need. It's it's something that you're not gonna use, uh, even though it's it's a little bit. Um, I don't know. It, it's it's a pity that you're sort of throwing out overboard that kind of that kind of locks. But I can imagine that happening here because the the booster has its own uh, locks header tank too. So perhaps that's going to be a thing. They switch to the header tank, and then once it's on the header tank, they're going to be dumping all the liquid oxygen from the main tank so that it's uh, lighter. Yeah, I guess a lot. It wouldn't be a locks vent quite so much as it would be like a locks dump, like a place to yeah. just get rid of all of your excess locks Whatever when you switch it's... to the header tanks. Yeah, Michael, Michael, uh, in, in our back channel, is like out of the air, you can. Right, Michael in our back channel is speculating, and it's speculation. Like all of the rest of this is, we're all just guessing here. Uh, Michael speculating that when the booster lands on the on the chopsticks, it's not going to be connected to. Uh, to GSE, so perhaps that's how they safe the uh, safe the booster and, and and you know get rid of all the remaining propellant, which plausible. Although they're not gonna they're not trying to catch. Are they trying to catch booster seven? I forget if that's a thing or not. No, but it, but they're gonna be simulating the landing. Someone pointed out that doesn't work in zero G. Well, you know, once it is re-entering, you can actually use the locks to be able to to cool the, the booster. Hey, well idea. <laughs> I mean, also it's a, it's uh, a heat shield. <laughs> yeah, right. You, also, you in dump zero it, G, and then... it, it does work in zero g if you have all edge. So yeah, they have the thrusters, the cowbell thing yep. is. They, they gonna have I a have, lot of cow puns. Yeah, on the they chat. have more cowbell. They have all the cowbell. Somebody play yeah. blue blue oyster cult. Um, let's see. Look for some more viewer questions. Got some good questions for Starship. Uh. But see, I told you we would get to the two circle things. You guys, you're like, don't do this. I was like, we did it. It was fine. Two circles. <laughs> uh, trying to figure out how to, a way to shoehorn a three shells joke in. This guy doesn't know how to use the three shells. Uh, the new fuge, see. four towers, four towers, and two two circles and three shells. Um, and the, and David, the thrust is three. Yes. Uh, David Dean. Uh, okay, so we can get to David Dean's hour old super chat here now. Are crane lifts the kind of over overreaching mechanism that SpaceX is looking to move away from? Uh, I almost wonder if um, this is like well, a joke question, like overreaching yeah. crane lift, move away from the crane, like that sort of thing. Like the booster is moving away from the but, crane; it's going onto the mount. Um, to, but to answer it seriously. Yeah, please do. I... Um, they are, we, I, I expect, and like, that's what we'll probably see in Boca, less open cranes, because they will use more and more cranes in the ha uh, high end, in the mega bay. They will use the chopsticks now for lifting. Uh, so basically, you will kind of get to the point probably where they will reduce the amount of cranes that are going on all over uh, Boca. So we might uh, approach a situation now where Texas crane watchers uh, are kind of need need a uh, need for for a new hobby. Uh huh. All right. Well, luckily there'll be Florida crane watchers. Um. Let's see. Overlord Raven, thank you for the support. They say NASA is all about acronyms that can be words. Yes, that is correct. <laughs> Ryan Weber, what's up, Ryan? Saying sorry, Adrian. Delta Four Heavy is meh. You are completely wrong, Ryan. Uh, yes. Delta Four Heavy rules. Completely wrong. It sets itself fi on fire before it launches. Like what? How? You don't get cooler than that. Like yeah. I'm gonna launch to orbit, but real quick, douse myself in fuel and set myself on fire. I mean, come on. It's it's uh, basically a watch this before launch. It's like yeah, hold hold my propellant. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, you worlds. know, Starship could be the same when it launches, just not desirable, I guess. Oh, and the poll is closed. First to orbit, chat is saying Starship at 63%, Mega Moon Rocket, ugh, at 22%, and 
And don't ask me about my favorite child, 14%. So well, there we go. Let's see if chat ends up being right. Um, Musical Wolves, thank you for the support. They say musical. They say Starship should launch the like button. Uh, that would be pretty great. Musical Wolves again saying SpaceX launching fireworks on top of the high bay tomorrow. I mean, tomorrow is Freedom Day, uh, celebration of throwing tea into the ocean uh, because that's the only good thing to do with tea. Sorry, Crispy. Uh, maybe they will. They've done fireworks from the high bay and stuff in the past, so we'll, we'll keep our eyes open. Stay tuned to Starbase Live, another live stream on our channel. You can watch Engines at McGregor. You can watch The Port at Canaveral with Fleet Cam, and you can watch Starbase Live and see if there's fireworks tomorrow night. That'd be cool. Um, Gustavo, thank you for the support. They say, will Booster have a 30 Trivent? Can't wait for a, a giant squirt Boy. from a 33 combined swoop. I don't think so, right? Like, they... Uh, Can you imagine all been... the venting from the Booster with all yeah. those 33 that would be nuts. if that were to be... Yeah, Especially if they, that's like... Gonna happen. That would, especially like if they like pulsed the vents and did cool things. Um, but no, like on the <laughs> ships since SN15, we've sort of seen them uh, consolidate those vents. We no longer see a tri vent on the ship, which really we should call the engine chill vent. Um, and so th we there's still engine chill, you know, venting with associated with the ship, but it's no longer the three trilateral symmetry vents. And so do not expect a 33 tribe i don't even know what that would be like dodeca nana something vent uh try like a try or something I don't yeah know. something something like that uh oh my gosh we have an end of show poll uh yeah do you and like... also chris b got me with the uh enjoy your your tr uh enjoy your treason day um, yeah oh nice that, yeah <laughs> that caught me <laughs> treason day it's freedom day okay uh <laughs> End of show poll, do you like NSF live polls? Uh, if you yeah. say no, what are you doing? Yeah, I don't know. But, I mean, everyone's allowed to like different things. Um, we are getting to the end of things here, so I will do a couple more Starship questions. Is there anything else on Starship that we want to cover right now? Do we want to make any kind of predictions? Like I have how static thing. fire testing will go? Or... Go I had one thing that is not as big as you know having all the engines and all of that, but they tested the Starlink loader. So that's oh, yeah. another big oh. thing. Oh, that's a big it's a deal. big thing, but it's on its own, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's still cool. All of that. Did we get to see uh, like a Starlink satellite as part of that, or sort of just knew that they were testing the loader because it was next to the ship in the in the high bay, like you can see there? Yeah, it has some some kind of tray. I think we have pictures of that from Nick. Uh, it has like some tray. That it looks like it's it's opening its mouth uh, with it with the tongue out, uh -oh. <laughs> and. Yeah, it it looks like they just basically load all the all the the Starlink satellites on the on the box, and then they roll out through that tray thing into into the into the vehicle. So that's sort of I th I think that was probably what, what what they were testing. They have cameras too, and they have even a monitor on the backside. So you can see on the backside it has like something with a with like a um sort of a screen or something. See, you can see there the, the tray a uh, little bit. Yeah, yeah they're on, on the left. Goes. It does look like it's sticking mm -hmm. its tongue out. Yeah, it's like, eh. <laughs> see, what did they you say see, in the... What did Elon happy. in the engineer? Yeah. It does, it's like, he... Those are cameras, uh, I think. I'm, or, or, I'm or, happy or to... lights or something. It's like, I'm uh, happy to jump Starlings. I'm happy to barf Starlings into you. <laughs> um... <laughs> What did Tim and the, or, uh, the Elon and the engineer in Tim's uh, inter recent interview say? Like it was inspired by flat pack. Uh, it was it was something. They, there was like a specific term that he used that I like made a mental note to to Google later, and I have not yet. But um, that whole entire system is like is uh, is very novel and uh, looks like you know a cool way to handle Starship uh, Starlink integration on Starship. Um, who knows? Who knows when we're gonna? I, I just can't wait to see the first, uh, first Starlink V two and oh, pallet stacker. Thank you, industrial pallet oh, stacker. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna Google that later. Um, yeah, I mean that's where we're at. We will have to keep our eyes on Boca for upcoming booster static fire testing. It's gonna be, whew, it's gonna be hoot. Uh, it's gonna be a hoot. And you know, one of the one of the things we'll look out for is Mary getting an overpressure notice. 
of some kind. Uh, maybe that'll happen again. It has happened previously. So that'll be one of the major signs to look out for. And that will know that that's how you'll know when things are really getting really real. But I think the last little bit of Starship related thing would be Kennedy Space Center, not Starbase Boca, but Starbase Kennedy. I'm making that a thing. Deal with it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> at Kennedy Space Center, the, the third tower section has rolled out. The tower is rapidly getting assembled. Um, so no shortage of of uh, activity there at, at Kennedy Space Center related to Starship. And if you want to keep up on all of that, we've got... Oh, look, it was the VAP. <laughs> uh yeah so the the i'm so you derailed you derailed my brain thank you um flyover video yeah, yeah. flyover video thank you if Chopsticks. you want to keep track of what's going on uh with the, the build out of kennedy space center for starship there is our most recent flyover uh that steven and julia shot and patrick edited so definitely check out the flyover videos if you haven't already um, there, I've plugged Starbase Live and McGregor Live and Fleet Cam and Flyover Videos and the dailies and Static Fired live streams coming up. I think that's we got a full slate going on right now, so no shortage of content. Oh, look, there's merch. Um, check out some merch <laughs> if you would like. You can see Adrian's wearing a nifty uh, NSF polo looking suave, and Alejandro's Rock got the Raptor Wrangler, Wrangler shirt, uh, yeah. and I've got a shirt my girlfriend made. Um, so <laughs> yeah, uh, definitely check out the merch store again. It's another way to support what we do. The super chats are awesome. All of you members are awesome. And if you want to, uh, support us another way, you can check out the merch store and grab yourself some sweet merch. Like there's like an Artemis one shirt. There's all kinds of good stuff. T classic tank watchers design. we got the Ikea starship design. So yeah, definitely check out the merch store. We appreciate everybody that wears our merch and, to this day, one of the more surreal things I've ever experienced is someone coming up to me wearing our merch and uh, and thanking us for the coverage. So uh, if you want to freak us out in real life, wear our merch and say hi. <laughs> Just kidding. In real <laughs> life, don't don't please don't freak us out. But do wear our merch and do support what we do. It's super appreciated. I absolutely love this, uh, the IKEA design that Raphael uh, and Pauline collaborated on. It's so good. But uh, yeah, I think... I do like a lot the the metal prints. I think that's super cool. If I metal were prints. able to to put things on my on my walls, I will do that. Apart yeah, from metal, shelves, metal prints also very cool. Uh, it, they're they're just nifty because you don't have to have a frame. I have so many yeah. pieces of artwork that I need to hang, but I don't have. They're not framed, and so it's nice to just do away with that whole hassle and have a nice metal print that you can get in our store. From I think Nick and Pauline are the ones that have metal prints up right now. There might be like a Mary shot uh, or some shots from Mary. I'm not quite sure. But merch store. Check it out. Buy some stuff. It supports what we do. Super appreciate it. Um, last Super Chats. Uh, Musical Wolves, thank you for the support. Drunk Crane removes cranes from Starbase. Me, thank you for the 99 cents. And Jake Winlow saying thank you for the fun and informative show with a very generous Super Chat. But I think that will do it for us this week um does anybody have anything else that they want to throw in at the end here well i believe missing something what 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 i mean i know i'm, I'm gonna i'm gonna thank our uh i'm gonna thank our yeah. <laughs> i meant anything else like starship or space related okay. yeah, go. I have one thing, uh, as always, I want to thank our, our chat moderators and uh, everything, everybody that is volunteering and, and doing stuff for NSF, which is just amazing. And uh, thanks for doing that. Yeah, it's a huge team of people, everybody working their butts off to make this machine go. So thank you to everybody that uh, we helps the, out. The live stream of the booster rollout and lift since, that, since, our, since our last NSF live, and we had. Like probably the most commentators that we have had in months because it was like something coming in and another one. It was so long of a live stream. We had many many people joining, and and also the SPL operators, all the mods, and everything. That was super great. Yeah. Awesome. Well, that is a that is a good point. Thank you, Adrian, for uh, for mentioning that. And with that. I think we are done for the week. We've got so many good Starship questions that I want to ask, but we're already 10 minutes over, uh, and I haven't eaten, and I also have to clean up a massive pile of coffee that I spilled on the floor. So, 
<sighs> with that, I think that's it for the week. I definitely want to thank our launch director and flight engineer members. Those are the two highest tiers of the membership program. Y'all are absolutely awesome. You can see everybody's name there. And if you want your name listed at the end of NASA Space Flight Live, and more importantly, if you want to uh, really help support what we do, check out the membership program and specifically the launch director and flight engineer levels of support. It's absolutely stunning to me that we have so many launch directors and flight engineers, and it means we can continue to do really cool stuff and, more importantly, do more cool stuff that, uh, you know, we're always working on new things in the background. So thank you, everybody, uh, for watching this week. Adrian, thanks for your uh, commentary, except for the Saturn V and, and whatnot stuff. <laughs> Thanks for dealing with my uh, very good takes over the show, and I'm uh, sad that you all don't see the, the right takes. It's all right. Well, you know, we just we agree to disagree. And Alejandro, yes. <laughs> thank you also for being on the show. Much appreciated. Always enjoy your commentary. <laughs> I'm thankful I don't have uh, any taste at all on things. <laughs> so, I mean, hey, that's yeah. that's one way to uh, to get by is just be neutral. <laughs> I have no strong opinion one way or the other. Uh, and of course I'm Jack Byer. I'm the guy talking now. I don't know. I take photos. I live stream commentate. I manage the video team. It's You're fun. Cool too. I have a beard. Anyways, thanks everybody for watching. I think that'll do it for this week. Stay tuned for a future NASA space flight live next week and all of the other fun stuff we're going to, we're going to have in the meantime, who knows, maybe some booster static fire streams, maybe uh, another flyover. We just, everything going on. So stay tuned. More coming. And thanks again for watching. We have lift off. Propulsion continues to be normal. Pressure looks good. Power up. Water towers fly! Yes! Ego down phenomenal. Why did not try SCE dog? Yikes. You bet. Incur. We don't need any more of these.